Welcome to the Executive Innovation Show podcast, where we bring you real executive conversations with industry game changers and thought leaders. We ask the questions you're thinking, what you're scared to ask, and we make your brain hurt afterward. With your host, Carrie Chitsy Wells, co-founder and CEO of One Touch Video Chat, live video interviews, and the nonprofit Humans Helping Humans. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Healthcare Knowledge Nugget as a part of the Executive Innovation Show podcast series, where we bring you the hot topics, the questions we receive each week, and bring you game-changing ideas, best practices, and tips. Today's Knowledge Nugget is going to be 10 Telemental Health Benefits and Use Cases we get the question all the time, how are folks using telemental, telebehavioral health? What are some very specific use cases? And so today we're going to walk through quickly 10 that we're seeing the biggest trend in the industry right now. Number one, mental health has the highest no-show rate of any other appointment type in medical. And so number one is reducing those no-show rates really allowing you to look at somebody that's coming in for therapy sessions uh, once a week, whatever it may be, and allowing them for certain times and appointment times to be able to do that through video telehealth. So some therapists have a rule that you have to come in in person once a month, and then they do the other sessions through video. Some it's a couple times a quarter, whatever it may be. But reducing the no-show rate is not only affects patient outcomes, but it affects your bottom line um, if you're in mental health. The second one is seniors. A lot of people don't talk about the big stigma and access for seniors, but a lot of seniors are going through mental health issues, and they don't know how to explain it. They're old school. They don't come from the uh, rule, of, rule of thumb of asking for help or saying you have mental health issues. They think of it as mental, uh, you know, institute, mental illness, things like that. And so really being able to do video appointments in the comfort of their own home and talking to them about things like depression or anxiety from retiring or being in isolation, that's your second one. The third one is youth. Youth is a double-edged sword in the fact of you're taking your child out of school to attend mental health appointments. You're also the parents missing work. So again, back to that no-show rate, really being able to provide the ability to have some of those appointments done through video really helps. Um, A lot of schools are allowing nurses to set up rooms and be able to do those. And with telehealth technology and telemental technology being browser-based. The school doesn't have to buy any expensive hardware or software. That leads to the next one, which is foster care. A lot of children that are in foster care are on uh, Medicaid, and it's very hard, given the guidelines of foster care, for foster parents to be able to take off work or even get somebody to give the foster child a ride to mental health appointments. There's psych evaluations. There's ongoing care there. Big area we're seeing is in foster care. Last one um, in kind of this bucket of youth uh, is, and, and, and applies outside, it applies to population health, it applies to youth, is Medicaid access. Very hard to get a Medicaid appointment for mental health. A lot of mental health professionals don't take Medicaid. However, with the reimbursement and the pay, uh, for telehealth, it is opened up providers that have not provided Medicaid access to mental health that are now offering that. So big area, um, if you're a mental health professional and you're not taking Medicaid, you should look at the reimbursement. You might reconsider, and it could really help um, youth and population health and even seniors. Next one is rural health. There's a lot of shortage areas. There's a lot of uh, access to uh, mental health that you cannot get crazy ratios, one to a million mental health professionals in some areas. And so reaching those rural areas where people are driving an hour and a half, two hours to appointments to rural and community hospitals for mental health um, is, is a big area. 
Next one is shortage in facilities. So a lot of your rural and community hospitals don't have enough mental health professionals on staff and they can't get people to live in those rural areas. So if you can get people to video in, whether they're whether the patient's at facility or at home, you can now have access to a lot of additional mental health professionals that may be able to provide access and take patients for you at your facility, whether it's a long-term care facility, whether it's a uh, acute care facility, whether it's uh, a treatment facility or a hospital, this is the great way of connecting it, especially for all my FQHC buddies out there. Um, it's a great way to plug it in. The next one on the list is psych evals. There's a lot of shortage on being able to get that immediate psych eval, whether it's a treatment facility and it's an admission that you need it, whether it's foster care system, whether it's a rural and community hospital, there's a large shortage in psychs. And so the ability to, whether it's a nurse or a ER doc or provider that's connecting to those, those psych evals um, bedside with the patient, that's another big use case we're saying. The next one is the follow-up appointments. So whether it's a discharge from the hospital and you're putting it on the patient to then go find a mental health professional, whether you're primary care and you're jotting down some names or giving a sheet to go get a mental health professional, there's a big breakage in that happening. So being able with 100% browser-based telemental health platform, being able to do that initial uh, consultation, that initial meeting right there and establish that will help prevent a lot of that readmissions or relapse. And the last one is treatment facilities. So all the telemental health that goes on in a treatment facility daily, weekly, whether you're in 30, 60, 90 day rehab and you're getting discharged, you've built this relationship with that mental health professional and now you're kind of out on your own. You got to find a new person after you've built all this rapport. Now with the biddable reimbursements, both on the opioid side, addiction side and mental health side, you can continue that relationship. So if you have an inpatient or outpatient treatment facility, you really need to look at your model your staffing, and how to continue those relationships for better patient outcomes, less relapse, and readmission. That's today's Healthcare Knowledge Nugget, the Executive Innovation Show. Feel free to submit questions, be featured on the Knowledge Nugget, subscribe both to our YouTube, Vimeo, and the podcast channels to get your Knowledge Nugget on Thursdays. That's today's Knowledge Nugget. This podcast has come to a close. To hear more from the Executive Innovation Show podcast, subscribe, submit questions, and share the love. Follow us on social. We're everywhere.